Alright, welcome to our Nutcracker Four Season Banner Beginning Project. Um, this project is really unique because we take a banner topper and we put background papers, which is a clock background paper, up there. I've got to put a hole still in there and put my works in there. But there's a little silver hanger that will hang your banner from the back of the clock so that you can have a functional piece so it will be an actual working clock that you hang a banner on. And what we've got here is we've got, if I can make room on my table, we've got a cutout bottom poinsettia nutcracker and Christmas banner ready to go. And I've got three more prepped, um, we'll hope I get them done, um, to go with the different seasons. But I, I love the, this concept and this idea, so I see many more coming out um, in the future. I use this flower, um, I have gotten so many compliments on it here in the studio. This flower is the most simple thing you'll ever do. You could do it almost with your eyes shut as long as you have your pattern traced on. Um, the technique is simple Simon. The Nutcracker is very base coaty. He's also very simple. He's just got a lot of little steps because he's got many colors. Um, we've got a fun background. We've used texture crackle on our banner material. We've cut out the bottom. We've got a clock. We've got background papers. Um, we've got new gold metal powders. Um, we've got all kinds of things going on. I hope you enjoy this. All right, I cut my rock line so that it would fit within the holder that I'm going to be using. So you'll want to adjust yours. The measurements are in the pattern packet. But then, what I did is I cut it a little bit long. I don't know how long exactly I want this yet, and I'm not sure where I'm going to end up. So I just went ahead and cut it long, but I'm going to prep the whole thing the same way. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to roll with a two inch foam roller. I've got my nonstick mat here for an easy cleanup. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a one coat of the bleach sand because, and even though the color is very close to the background, I want one coat of my, my uh, base coat on and then let it dry and then I can go back and I can do my slip slap and it will lift the color off, exposing the color behind it. In this case, it probably wouldn't matter too much, but I'm going to go ahead and just get my first coat on anyway. Um, this has a little bit of a funny texture that will show if it's not quite base coated all the way. I am um, using Rocklon, and I am on the rough side of the Rocklon. That's the choice that I made today. I'm going to go ahead and prep all four of my seasonal pa panels at the same time because um, the prep for Rocklon is, you know, kind of the boogaboo. It just takes a little bit of extra time to dry and stuff. Just work it into the, the texture of the rock line. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, I'm dry here. Sometimes a little bit of nubs kind of raise up on this rock line when you get it rolled. So I'm going to take my sand and just, just knock them down. Just, I don't know what that is, but it's not as fun to paint. That'll happen on your floor cloth as well, even if it's just canvas. It doesn't have anything to do with the rock line. It seems to be... I don't know, something to do with the canvasy texture. Okay, so we're going to ah, slip slap the bleach sand of the background. So we'll kind of re wet our surface. Just, it doesn't have to be even, it just needs to be re wetted. My rock line's not quite, it's cool to the touch, it's not quite dry yet, so probably could have let it dry. And then we're going to roll into the front part of the toe of our roller, and we're going to roller slip slap. And if we get any polka dot kind of patterns, then we'll use the back side to kind of blend them down. And so just kind of do a little e -e 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 kind of action. And you want to be careful not to overstir the pot because you will make mud. Okay, and we want it kind of a dirty, whitish kind of color. We want some of that texture and movement in the background. So I think that's about right. We could use a sponge for this, but I think it would be too speckly and too splotchy. Okay, one of the ideas that we're going to do is I am going to drill a hole in here. I'm going to cut out my background paper clock and I'm going to put my clock on here and then do a faux finish on this part of the clock that will um, tie it in with this um, antiqued paper or tea stained paper. OK, 
Okay, so the very first thing I want to do is go ahead and treat this exactly like my um, banners that I'm going to hang. I thought that it would be great for my banners to hang um, that off the clock in the same color pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and roll and do my edges and borders however I want them. If you're real careful and don't mess it up like I just did, you can leave it that dark um, laser cut color and it won't look terrible. So we'll do exactly the same technique. We're going to pick up the nose of the roller and give it that um, distressed, slip slapped kind of look. And then we'll glue the paper on top of this. Right, you want to make sure not to trace your tracing on before you have um, your surface completely cured because then your graphite lines will get trapped in the uncured paint. That is something I didn't learn until just a few years ago. Um, this is Triple Threat um, Ghost Rider and what this is is it has a ceramic lead that's white, a ceramic lead that's gray, and a roller ball that has no lead and um, it makes it so that you glide over your surface as you're tracing and it has a super comfy grip on it so that you don't have that death grip on your stylus feeling anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and just trace all my main outlines. My intention is to cut out these leaves down here at the bottom, but what I'm leaves and petals, but um, I want to go ahead and just paint it without cutting it out and then I'll cut it out afterwards. Okay, the next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to use a self-healing mat and I'm going to cut out, this is a little swivel knife, this little guy just swivels around, it's very, very, you're holding it very nice and close to the area that you're going to cut, and it makes a very clean, um, detailed cut. Okay, so I'll just start cutting right, I want to be on that black line, because I can always, can always adjust later. So I'll just go around and I'll cut my circle out and then I'm going to drill my hole first. You are, if you're ordering this surface, you're going to order it with the hole already done so you'll cut your hole out. So the little clocks and the big clocks were designed to fit onto um, a CD and then one of our wood clock faces. I can't remember which dimension right now. But um, I also thought wouldn't it be fantastic if we went ahead and had it so that you could put it on wood and just kind of center it in there. Put your hole right there. We'll do a little montage thing, and then you don't have to paint all that little detail stuff. I think it's going to be awesome. So we're going to use, these papers are extremely, um, I guess, a dense kind of material, a pulp, I guess. They don't hold down with wimpier um, decoupage mediums and things like that. Um, I went through a bunch of tests. This is Deco Art's new Deco, Deco Page medium and I did try it along with a whole bunch of other things and this one actually was the very best. Um, so you just use it like you do standard decoupage type mediums. I'm going to brush a little bit in my background. I'm going to apply a little bit on, this is a matte decoupage medium. Um, you probably don't want this to be shiny. I'm going to put some on the back of my clock face. And then I'm going to line it up. Okay, after you get it where you want it, then you've got to smooth out all the air bubbles. I lifted it up like 12 times. Then you put your glue over the top, and then you're going to let it dry. How awesome is that? My clock face is already on there and I didn't have to line straight in circles and all that or anything. We're going to base coat our flower poinsettia flower petals with country red. And I shouldn't have done all that inside detail. Look at that. How silly. If you want to get smooth transitions, put down your brush um, before you get to the edge of your leaf and it looks like maybe two coats. Alright, next 
just I want to make it so that my flower is not so stark away from color that than my background. Okay, so in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take khaki tan and then we're going to use a little espresso. And we'll kind of do them just dirty brush. So I'll start with khaki tan. I'm going to use a big crescent stencil brush. It's domed one way and domed the other way so you'll never leave blunt little marks and lines. I'm going to dry it all off on my paper towel. It's a dry paper towel, it's a dry brush, and it's dry paint, so no water in your paint. And while I still have to go ahead and do my, um, my second coat, I'm going to use this opportunity to go right up next to my lines, and I'll just scumble. This is a paper towel intensive technique. I'll scumble on some darker background any area that I want it to be at my edge. The nice thing about Rocklon is you don't need to worry about fraying and stuff, so that is, you can take your paint right on up to that edge. You don't have to worry about hems and things like that. Okay, and take it right over there. Carry it up my side, just like it's a little bit like antiquing. Okay. I won't need to worry about down here. Um, then when I get done, I'm going to do a second coat. So I'll do, I'll do this side off camera so you don't have to watch me do everything twice. Then I'll pick up with a dirty brush the espresso, which will make it another color because I've got something in my brush. And then I'm going to deepen right in my cracks, right down into the crevices there, up the edge. Right on up and over. Okay. And we can't forget up here as well, so we're going to have to really bring this all the way up our edge. And then when it gets up to the top, we'll circle kind of around his head a little bit. So I'll clean my brush out. I don't want to go straight with the brown. If I need to, I will. I've got my nutcracker on there. I know I'm going to want a hem of some sort, maybe ish about that much. So I want to make sure that I plan where I'm going to take that line to. I don't want to leave the right amount of negative space around it, but not too much. make him look like he's got sky over him or something like that. All right, and then next we'll darken it up. Just scumble and give it that little bit of a rounded look. Maybe I'll go one more time down here in the deeply darkest, darkest area. Okay, when you squint at it, I look in the camera, it's an upside down and backwards kind of range. All right, so then we'll get out our half inch. Um, White Wonder Rake, and we're going to spatter. So we'll get some water in our espresso color. We're going to use the handle of our brush, and we're going to go ahead and give it some dark spatters back here. Ooh, those are a little bit heavy. We might have to tone those down. So to tone down your spatters, you can um, tap off more over here. We'll leave them for right now, and we'll see if I need to do anything with them. Okay. Maybe if they weren't so lonely, they'd be a little bit better. Okay, 
think we'll like that. Now I'm going to repeat the other side. Okay, now we have the um, clock to think about. The clock is going to be, um, this, we want it to match, so I'm, make sure that you're doing these at kind of similar times, at least the clock and your, your first banner. Okay, and so then dry rub, same thing. I'm going to go all around the edges on the clock. I switched to a smaller brush because I made a mistake and washed my bigger one. You need these to be dry when you do them. Okay, we'll just go all the way around. I'm not going to go on the clock paper yet. I've got another little plan here. My plan is developing. You get some on the paper, don't worry about it. Okay, so we'll just pull that in real, whoops, yeah, that's when you don't rub off enough, that's what you get. Pull it in nice and tuck it around things here. We want to go ahead and bring it around the, the base. Remember, this is where your banner is going to hang. I have to think of something pretty clever to fill that little space. Then dirty brush, espresso. And then that's going to be more to bring your corners in a little. Okay, and then we'll deeply dark, darken the corners just a little bit more. Soften them down. See how much nicer that already looks than the other side. Okay, just a little bit. Top. Okay, I also want to spatter it, but before I spatter, I'm going to do something a little bit interesting with the texture crackle. Okay, the texture crackle is simply amazing. So you can, this is tintable. I don't care for the ones that aren't tintable because um, they lock you into a specific color. So this one I can mix paint into it. Okay, so my clock, what I have is I have the clock face, which is one color, and I have the clock background, which is another color. I don't want this to get too antique looking, so I've got to be careful there. I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of desert sand if I have any left in my bottle. Kind of make my base coat mix, kind of. <clears throat> Just going to mix those in. And now that will be the color that I have to use. And I'm going to take it, oops, especially this would be cool if you wanted to fade in the edges. And I'm just going to take my And trowly thing here. Now I'll have to go back in and dry rub a little bit more. Just gonna give this kind of aged. look. Okay, now I'm not going to do this side because I have to go finish that side. This will start cracking and it actually does a really nice job of cracking. Try it anymore. Okay, I don't want that really to be covered completely. Squinting. Okay, I think I like that. We'll see how we go. All right, and you guessed it. I'm going to take a little bit of my texture crackle that I tinted, and I'm going to bring it in to my piece. I don't want it thick because it's going to be a banner, so like that's going to be a problem if I get it too thick. I think I'll add it really interesting. Got a little bit choppy there. And 
I could probably take some and tint it in a little bit darker and take it out to my edges. So I'll go into the two mixes that I was using for um, the dry rubbing around the edge. Make a little mix out of those. And just come out here. A little pink hue. I think I don't like that. Yeah, I don't care for that. I'd rather have it be the cream hue and then rub over it. Sometimes when you put burnt umber, really, or an espresso color, is a kind of an orange or a red color. When you thin it with white, it becomes um, pink or sherbet colored. So, not always your best choice. don't want to cut this more than I think it's like 50% otherwise it won't crack. You, know, you got to have cracks. And then when you store your banner you're going to want to store it yeah I'll have to go and read tint those. You're going to want to store it on a skirt hanger with like a paint stick in it because that will keep it hanging straight and then you don't have to worry about your crackle falling off later because I doubt that it's very flexible. dry. So some of these little things will have little knots and things on them. So we'll just go in and try and keep the sanding off of my wet paint. Knock them down and then shake them off. Okay. So we need to go ahead and do our dry rubbing on the stuff that um, that doesn't blend. Like if it sticks out too much like down here. So, take a little of our espresso. And we'll just knock it down in, <coughs> make it all kind of become a family member. Up here where we were struggling with big blobs. Cracked really nicely though. Of course, we'll have to spatter again. I like the texture on here, and it's nice and flexible, so I'm not having any problems with that. A little high point. Um, let's see. Okay, so now spattering one more time. that to be sunk down in. Okay. Now I'm going to go onward. I went ahead and did my base coating just to see how my balance was going to be. And I think I may do a little bit with my greenery down here. We'll see in just a second. I forgot we had our second piece here, so I've got to get this one shaded back down. And you know, I think I'm going to go ahead and glaze this one. So I'll pick up some water, use a big oval glaze brush, and I'll just kind of float glaze. And the reason for that is, is it's going to sink into those cracks and make them show up better. On canvas, floating is not such a friendly activity. So on this surface, it's a little bit friendlier. So I'm just side loading, big oval glaze, lots of water. Just join hands with everything here. Round it out. Okay, I'll let that dry. Okay, I have a elegant scroll stencil, and I'm going to use part of it. This part where it just snakes out over here. I'm going to flip this around. I want to bring it right 
about to the edge, coming out of the edge of my poinsettia. And I've got tack it over and over in spots on this just to secure it down just a little bit. And I'm going to use my fingertip dauber, which allows me to get in there and have some control over what's being applied. I want it really heavier down here. I have to hold that little piece down. Blotting it off just to make sure I don't get a heavy application. I want this very faint, soft up here. Now to do the other side, I'll have to let this dry. I don't think I have another side that I can use yet. I'll have to let this dry and then I'll bring it up the other side. It's kind of got a magical little feel to it. And we'll bring out some greens and stuff like that as well. And then I think on our topper, I think we need to do kind of the same thing. Let's decide where we want to bring some green fun. Do we want it to drop down from the top? Or kind of am liking that. Oh, that cup's in there really nicely. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, so press that down. Oh, just about ran my stencil straight on through my paint. Good job. We'll avoid that leaf. That's why I'm using the dauber. because this is going to be a four season clock topper, I don't want to get too specific about what, um, like what season I'm in. So I want to make sure that I have, um, the palette is going to stay the same. So I'll, I'll do my, my colors. I'll use the same kind of green and all my greens and I'll try to keep something consistent, the background color and the greens. Okay, so then there's that. I think we need another curly cue in there. Maybe this little guy here. And that gives him just a little bit of lacy curly something or another going on. Okay, next I'll thin some espresso, grab my palette knife, and we want to spatter around the edges. On the clock itself. Watch your spatters, they can go directional on you and then they'll look kind of like they're all leaning. So make sure that you're spattering from a non-pattern making stance. And I think let's go ahead and thin a little avocado spatter with that. We'll see where we get from here. I think we probably need to add some leaves. So we'll take a fancy new brush, which is so cool and groovy. It is a curved flat brush. I'm going to take avocado and just thin it out nicely in my paint. It's the first time I've seen a new brush in a while that was actually really, really, really unique. When you push down, on this and you lift up, you can make strokes, long ones, short ones, really long ones, flower petals, okay, all that kind of stuff. And what's neat about it is um, you can also float, so it's like a multi-purpose brush. You can take your flat and you can load it, and I've got filthy water so my float is not going to be clean but you can float it on the flat side. When you see stroke, you can go that direction or you can go that direction and it gives you a little bit more rounded edge to it. So it is truly 
a universal little brush. It does like a round, it does like a filbert, and it does like a flat. So excellent, excellent buy. And of course it's made out of awesome bristles. So then I'll take this brush and I'll bring out, oh, too, too strong. I want it watery. Some little ghosting leaves. Just faint little ghosts. This makes just the best little plop leaves. A little stronger at the top. And that just adds just that little bit of interest. Okay, we're gonna introduce a new brush. It's probably not new to everybody. Um, it's been around for a while. I have, I don't usually do very detailed things, um, not super duper fine details anyway, and these are going to be, where do you see them? They're gorgeous. Normally I use my Crescent stencil um, brush, but this is a good substitution for this brush, but see how skinny this, br whoops, this brush is and how fat this one is. Well, when I get ready to go, I'm going to need a skinny brush to do the things that I'm going to do today. So they come in, they're super stiff, super scrubby, super long lasting, super well made um, brushes. They're just crescent, brush, crescent, ah, it's a duplicate brushes. They come in a set of four, or you can get them individually. You need to use these dry. They're dry rubbing brushes or scumbling brushes, generally speaking, that are going to be used dry. So what you want to do is you want to have enough of them to be able to uh, rotate around. So if you don't get the set, get a couple duplicates of what you think will be your favorite size. Okay, so in this case, we are going to start our poinsettia and just go ahead and get that all done. We're going to use our curved flat to float and we're going to use Heritage Brick. And we're just going to do just what we would normally do every time we float. And that is almost not dark enough. We barely can see that we're doing anything, so we'll make a mix if we can find our palette knife. Okay, we're going to put the Antique Maroon, which is, I think, too dark by itself, 50-50 in with the Heritage Brick. We can't leap up that many jumps. Okay, so then I'll float into that. That should be a much nicer color. We've got a shade around all of our petals. Okay, so you want it to be nice and float, nice and um, floated, faded, good clean floats. And then what I'm going to do is once I get these shaded around all these leaves and outlined, I'm going to come in and use the smaller dry rub brushes to extend my floats so that it doesn't look like I just outlined with my floats. So first I'm going to shade around all the details and I'll come back to you and I'll show you how to extend those floats. So to extend my floats, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put my dry brush in, the same technique we did earlier, into my mix color. And now I'm going to bring a dry rub out into away from where uh, you could leave it a little bit strong because we're on such tone on tone colors. I can get that chisel right on in there and I can extend that float out so that it's prettier, rounder, much more graceful. So right here where they're coming together, you don't want to look make floats look like they're outlining. Kind of nice and rounded and arched. Give them good, good lines. So then we're also going to go, while we have this, um, this brush dirty and stuff, we're going to go ahead and you could trace um, a line, but we're going to give ourselves a vein line down the middle of our flowers, uh, petals. It's right on down the middle. Make it curved. Don't make it all straight and stuff. And then you can bring that out just a little on each side. So that it's softer and a little extreme there. And 
You're going to wonder how come you have not always painted flowers this way. We'll get that rounded down here. This is where shadows would happen. You have to start fighting your brush and you need more paint. You can turn it over to get the other side. Okay, let's see, is that going to go? We'll make that arch out this way. It's really kind of weird because you just sit there and you can rub, you can do this technique with your eyes shut, really. But you open your eyes and you look at it and suddenly things start taking form. It's very surprising, very fun. All right. Share. Very repetitious. Okay, get in the middle there, get to, to those outlines. So if I need to, I can switch to my smaller brush for these smaller leaves, like this one's not going to cooperate very well. So I'll get into this uh, one quarter inch size. And then I'll have a lot of control. Just go ahead and use it for this one too. I can get in here and really darken up my centers. Get that in nicely. Perfect. Look at how fun that is. Look how easy it was. You don't have to be a great floater to get great floating results. You just have to know which brush to buy. Okay. I like it. And we're going to go ahead while we have these two brushes dirty and we'll load it into the um, antique maroon and very much in the middle there will strengthen and not to the outside petals just to I need that little brush there just right stripey down the middle just to give that a little bit more fold You could pull in a little bit of this color that's straight and a little bit darker in the middle. We'll get out that little brush in a minute. Just in the center. Don't bring it all the way out or then it'll be sudden. But that makes our center look really foldy and, and nice. Okay, Get out the little guy. Swipe will do ya. You want it to come straight out of the middle because something's got to hold that little petal on there. Just make sure that it starts someplace. Good. That looks much deeper. Okay, I think we're good. Next, we'll take a dry, dry brush. And we're going to use um, Autumn Red. Is that a lie? Now autumn red, and we're going to rub the area next to the shadowy thing that you just did. And I think I'm going to be working too hard if I do this, so I'm going to mix it with 50-50, do the coral rose with it, give myself an intermediate color. I'm afraid coral rose will be too chalky, and I'm afraid the other is going to be too much work, like I'll have to keep going at it. So we'll just mix a medium. And I'm holding my brush back on its edge or its side now. And I'll, I can scumble even into my... Um, shadow area if I need to, just the hint of color on it 
to make them join up. Okay. And then we're going to repeat this with the coral rows. I'm going to switch to a tinier brush for these smaller. Notice that this makes nice rounded shapes. Even though it's a crescent and it's skinny, because it's short and tightly built, it can uh, maneuver around on your piece, give you nice round shapes. So you don't have to worry about it being um, making liney kind of shapes. Then we'll go dirty brush into coral rose. Now this is going to be right in the middle of our dry rub, but you want to make sure that you're dry. If you're not dry, you're going to be um, sticking together. And then that'll build on the color we just put under there. And then you'll start getting some shape to your leaves or flower petals. Now I'm going to use the mix of that coral rose and water it down, the one that was the autumn red and the coral rose. And I'm going to put a little vein thing in the middle of each of these shadow areas. And you can go a little lighter, mine's not showing up so well, so I'll mix in a little bit more coral rose. You don't want it to come out of the dark area very, very light. So I'm graduating it out. And I'm doing a thick, thin, thin thing. So I'm starting out on the tip of my very pointy, wonderful brush, pressing down and then letting it go to the tip. Again. These can fade it out on me a little bit. I'll redo those. Turning your piece. Okay, we'll just finish all those. Next we're going to go in and we're going to take a little bit of the soft, is it soft black? Black plum. And we're going to use this curved flat, which is a little long, and then get a little thicker. Yeah, mess it up completely, no problem. And shade, kind of almost doing like a, um, a angle shader kind of move with this thing. Just can tuck paint right in where you want it. You don't want it on every one and you don't want it in the same place. Okay, and that one is going to be too dark. So let me show you a trick. When you get something like that, you get out your Get out your eraser, you dip it in a little bit of water, and that will erase dried paint. Which is brilliant because, you know, you gotta take off dried paint sometimes. There. Now I don't have that big dark mark. And that was the triple threat eraser. Now we also wanna come in with this dark color, and we want to increase um, some of our shading. So where I want it the deeply darkliest, I'm going to tuck in some really strong, bold looking sh shadows. that 
down into the middle. Okay, that's just going to give us some separation from our other petals. finish up on these guys. Oops, ran right over my line. Reckless driving. Next we're going to take some of the antique maroon in our smaller, our medium size um, crescent brush. And we are going to go across the highlight line. And we're gonna create those other lines, whatever those other lines are called. faint line and repeat on all the leaves. I'm going to take my triple thread eraser and show you a little trick with it. I like to have an eraser that I can get right to the point where, where I want it. This comes with three points because it's shaped in a triangle and you can just pull it out and you can cut off the tip and then you can get exactly where you want with your eraser. Awesome for lace ornaments and things like that. I'm going to get all my lines off of here because we're getting to the finishing touch here. Okay, I want to go in to the tips of some of these um, veins and I want to highlight them. Just give them a little shot right in the middle to give them that bend. that little bit of a bend. Whoops. I guess that's what fingers are for, right? We'll take our dry rubbing brush and we'll go into the coral. The coral rose. And now we want to increase a little bit of our highlight on some of our leaves. Or I keep calling them leaves. They look so much like a leaf to me. Okay, then to make them sparkle, and you don't want them too shiny because if they're too shiny, this would not be a soft poinsettia. But you can put just a little dash, and that will give you a little bit more of a shine reflection kind of thing going on. Okay, and that just gives him a little bit more rich look. Okay, next we're going to get sizzling hot shot pink and we're going to put it on some of our inner leaf details on the inside. Um, the hot shots, what it does is it actually will blend with the red color that you've got going on so you can put this kind of neon looking stuff on there and it, it's transparent so it allows the colors to pop through. I can put it over here where that bends out. We don't want it everywhere, we don't want too much, but on these little inside ones, little kisses here and there would be fine. Okay, 
Then we're gonna take our cherry red, and that's a dark red. And what we're gonna do with that is we're gonna glaze the ends of our leaves with this dark, 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 and it's not gonna be really a glaze so much as it is kind of gonna be like a heavy wash down there. But I need it to fade and that's what I'm loving. Look at how cool this is. I can use this rounded end of my brush just to fade that across the tip of my leaf. Brilliant, brilliant. Love it. Okay. Yeah, and that just gives that, so it just gives it a much richer looking feel. So I don't need to worry about my float being all clean. Because I have that little rounded end to my brush. I'm just able to use it like a filbert a little bit. So I'm going to do that to all of the ends. Okay, we're going to use avocado and put in our little centers, different sizes. And when they dry, we'll highlight the tips of them with the um, lighter green. We'll move on to our leaves while we're waiting for paint to dry. And we need to shade. So we're going to take our plantation pine. We're going to do basically the same technique as we did on our poinsettia petals. I'm going to use my curved flat. And I want to shade around all my things that connect. And I'll make them so that they are nice and rounded. And then underneath the flower, same thing. And then we'll extend that. See how that's a little stripey looking? We'll extend that with, oh, look at how I can tease that little float out. Yay, that's great. Anyway, we'll extend it with the dry rubbing. Okay, and I'm gonna go back in there and I'm gonna soften that float. Cool, that works awesome. And you want to remember never to cut through your floats. So like if a float is wet, don't be cutting through it because you'll drag it out and you'll make it messy. It'll be a problem. Okay. Just repeat that on the rest of your leaves. Okay, now we'll take our plantation pine, a large dry rubbing brush, and we're going to make that channel up the middle. And we can also extend our floats where we need to, bring them out a little deeper. Oh, I forgot everything over there. We'll use a dirty brush and we will increase the shading at the ends down here where it's darkest with black green. And we'll float that in, we'll rub that in, I guess. Where you would have it be the darkest. So these crescents have just enough control. Yeah, let's do that on camera. So these crescents have just enough control to get you right up next to the edge without screwing up your project. to that leaf edge. So you'll deepen with um, that black ring in your deeply dark list areas on your leaves and just a little bit up that central channel. Okay, next we're going to use our brighter green. And we're going to rub 
next to the shadowy area to give it that bend. A little bit of roundness. Pop into your shadow area just a little bit. Helps everything kind of blend together. And then we'll go in and just get a, a really strong kind of highlight. That gives it it's a little bit of shine. I'll add a little bit more of that in a minute. Okay, we're going to thin our Hauser Light Green. And we're going to do the thin, thick, thin thing. Wow. So thin coming out and then thicker. And that gives us our center veins. same little veiny weird dry rubbed things on these guys that we did on the others. And just fill them up with that. Next we go into the centers and we put little bright green dots on. It can be off and on those. You want to counter juxtapose them a little bit so that the darker ones show too. You could scatter in a couple extras wherever you want to. And I think we need a little bit of spattering on our leaves here, just on the leaves. So, of course, I can't mask this while I'm wet, so I'll have to wait until I get my, um, until the dots dry. So, in the meantime, let's go on to the legs of our little guy here. I've got my greens out. I might as well use them, right? Except for I just loaded into the wrong color. So, we need plantation pine, and we're going to shade with plantation pine. Actually, you know what? Let's dry rub first. That's safer. We'll dry rub with the um, Hauser Light Green right up the middle of his leg. It's okay, we'll let that dry. Okay, we're going to use the Black Green and we're going to come over here. I want to mask the red. Give it a little bit of something happening. Of course, my mask is ginormous, right? Something happening out. Oh, it's got to be masked. Okay. We're in a little bit of something happening. No, no, I dried up. On those leaves that's just a little bit to break it up or something I don't know quite what I'm trying to achieve but I like it so I'm going to repeat my highlight skinnier this time on his leg and stripier so skinnier I guess is stripier right now you can see that nicely we'll shade with plantation pine under the drum, straight across his legs. Where his boots come in. You can make that kind of dip up. And join there. 
around the little petal that's on top of his knee. And we'll shade back to back going down the middle of his leg. So we'll float that side. And we'll turn it. And we'll float next to it. And then we shade on either side of his leg. And that gives us form and roundness. And one more little highlight in the middle, and that'll make his legs look round. Right, we'll start on our red area, <clears throat> and I think we'll skip straight into the um, antique maroon here. I think this guy's outfit can support that. I'm going to go ahead and shade to delineate my areas. As you're doing your areas, like you want to do both sides of the arms, you want to do both sides of um, the, the suspender things or whatever these things are called that hold up. Don't forget to do around his hands, which are on top of his coat, because they would be casting a shadow. There we go. And then you want to shade next to the drum. under his hair. Remember all of these areas and things, whatever is on top of his coat needs to be shaded under. And that's going to give you under the, the braids. That's what's going to give you your form, is if you get things under and over things. Once I get that question a whole lot, is how do I tell where to shade? Well, if it's on top, it doesn't get shaded. It gets highlighted. If it's under, it gets shaded. So under his chin gets shaded on his coat. All right, now we have to do some of our highlighting on this guy. And I don't know that I'm going to be able to hop right into Coral Rose. If you make too big a jump, you might get chalky looking. So I'm still going to go ahead and mix with my Autumn Rose. I'm going to do the dry rubbing. And there's no sense not to do dry rubbing. Okay, right up the middle. I really, truly should have done this first, but it's okay either way. That's going to start giving you some form. Depending on how big a belly your guy has, or how big his chest is, it will depend on how bright you want to bring that highlight on his belly. You could make it uniform, and then he would be a, like, um, what do you call that, a uh, washboard tummy guy, you know, where he's just got a flat stomach and everything. You could pooch it right here, and he could have a big belly. It can be whichever way you want it to be. Now going into straight coral rose. Gonna highlight the middle of our highlight. And stripe you. Okay, we look in the we look at our project, squinty eyes, and decide if it's got enough form. I don't think mine does. I think I need to bring up my highlights a little bit. Okay, make things be just a little crisper. And then maybe I need to deepen my darks. Okay, or maybe I need to get out my sizzling pink and highlight that up the middle a little bit. Okay, that gives it a little bit more shine. Okay, we'll leave it for right now, but I think it might need to be brought up just a little more. All right, I'm going to do the black areas next. That's going to be the hat, the drum, the suspendery things for the drum, and all that stuff. So what we're going to do is use our ceramic lead and give myself a line for his rim. Okay, then we want, we've got to make the roundness happen. So I'm using graphite.
I'm going to go shape following, which is up and down. It's already shaded black, right? So I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to go to the rim. Right in the middle there. Give it some highlight. I'll come chucking down to the, the drum. Same deal, shape following, it's like curve to it. You've got to make this big enough to support the next color, which is a light gray, and then to support the final highlight, which is going to be more of the light gray. And then we've got this here, and we've got these. So he's behind that flower, but we need to give him a little bit of definition back here. Okay, now I can go back and I can repeat. On all three areas. One thing that you'll notice about these brushes is the bristles don't fall out. So when you're doing fine areas like faces and things, you'll um, you'll appreciate that. I'll dirty brush, dirty dry brush into the next color, which is slate gray, <clears throat> and I'll go back down to the bottom so I don't catch anything on wet. And that's going to be within that other gray area. Okay, we'll decide if that's enough. Now this, I'm going to bring my highlights up and down, but I still need to curve them a little, so they're going to be a little bit shorter to the sides. I'm using the fat of my brush instead of the skinny of my brush to make nice, wide, smooth lines. Now, if you're looking at that and you can't see that it's round, then you haven't got enough. Okay, go back here. I felt it to see if it was cool. The light brings the color forward. So we're getting there, but it's not enough. More time, I'm limiting how much area I cover each time. So I'm working more towards the center. wipe off as much for a final little highlight. Okay, and maybe that's just a little too strong. Okay, let's get some roundness to it. Do it one more time. It might start grabbing, so you've got to be careful, otherwise we'll end up with big lumps. Same thing here, don't wipe off too much of the color and give it a shine. Okay, here I don't think we're quite at shine place. And now maybe shine, maybe a heavy place to get shiny. Final shine with the same grays with a little bit of bleach sand. Oh, 
widen this one up a little bit. That's an awfully big, that's an awfully big hat he's got there. about our little straps here. So I'm just going to skip right to, I move to a skinnier brush, skip right to um, the gray because I need this to be kind of skinny and narrow. And maybe right within it, a little leather shine. Okay, we're going to do a space. We've got the base coat on here, and I want to go ahead and highlight the middle with some bleach sand. Just a general round highlight. And we'll do those hands at the same time. So just because this is a crescent and it's got that shape to it doesn't mean that you can't do round highlights. These are so short and stiff that they you can just scumble them around, no problem. See how that grabbed? Now I have to go fill that hole by tapping. Didn't wait till it dried. Or I didn't wipe enough stuff off to begin with. What I've got is the two sets of these brushes that I'm rotating. I put them up on, here I'll show you. I put them up on my bridge of my, this has got these great little grooves here. So I've got them up here to say that those are the ones that I used and they're wet. And then when they dry, I take them all off and I trade sets. So I'm just kind of cycling through the brushes, the crescent brushes. <clears throat> okay, now we need to shade the face. I'm going to shade the face with shading flesh. And so we'll just go around each side. These um, curved flat brushes are awesome to use for going around round objects. Flip it over, do the other side. And I'm pulling it into my um, into my highlight, and that's okay. And then I have to wait to do the chin area and under the hat until it dries. We'll do. We'll go skip down here and do the hands. I'll do one side first. I'm leading with the flat side of the brush. I could repeat if it doesn't look like it's getting dark enough. We'll flip them over. You always want to lead to the side that you can see. Don't paint the side you can't see. Like I wouldn't want to put my brush this way and paint away from my eyes. I have to paint the side I can see where my brush, what my brush is doing. Okay. Rocklawn is such a joy to paint with flexible and just you can do just anything with it. And so what I do is I, you'll see me kind of chopping at it and then I'll come back through with a smoothing um, swoosh. Okay, we're shading the drum skin with milk chocolate. It's base coated the color that um, the background was base coated, so I didn't have to undercoat or do anything. Okay, I'm going to shade behind here. Once again, because of that rounded back end, I can get my nose of my brush into shade without screwing up the back shading. 
And so that is making it a more flexible shade. Okay, I found an error in my pattern here, so I went and fixed it. Now I'm going to make the darkest areas, which are going to be corners underneath items. I'm going to increase my shading there. Up here by the hand. This whole side of the arm, actually. I'm going to round it out. Pull it down. Down here under the elbow. This will not be an everywhere shadow. It will be a that's the darkest place shadow. And it'll get deeper the darker it goes. Behind the drum. Over here underneath his hair and his chin. a big wad down there, who cares? Make our epaulets fluffier by giving them a real strong little highlight underneath or a shade there. Come over here. A little bit skinny down there, up the arm area. Maybe real skinny back behind the drum. Oops, stay off of the drum. Okay, I think I can like that. I'll get you in a little bit closer and we're gonna start on the trim. The trim is shaded, it's all based with um, milk chocolate and it's shaded with soft black. So I'm gonna do all my one sides first on my shading using that um, curved flat brush. And it's, I'm leading with, I'm gonna walk this in, I'm leading with the flat side. So the epaulets are treated like a button on top of their shoulders. Walk it in a little bit. I'll go this way on this side too. If you do all this stuff at once, it's not as irritating as having to, like I love the details but I hate stopping, base coating, stopping, base coating like, like that. I like to get it all done at once. On our trim up here on his hat, we're going to walk in, and I'm almost just tapping this. We're going to shade under the epaulette. Shade all these little buttons. This I'm just going to use a little chisel of my brush. I'm tipping it completely on its end just to give it a little kind of a fake shade. And we'll walk in on these guys. Oops, make a big mess. Same number here, shade up the gold. Finish the buttons. And then we'll reverse it all and do all the other sides of everything. On the epaulets, you're going to also shade the side to side part over here. And then also you're going to shade on your drum. Your drum is one of the gold trim things. Now as we're going to get into these tiny little, this is where this brush is brilliant because it is nice and tiny enough to do all of this little stuff. 
I'm using the 1 8 side under the load honey brown. Dry it off. I can get in there and I can do little buttons. I can use it bigger and I can get the, um, the caps on the epaulets. By base coating it medium color and then going in and shading and then highlighting in between the medium color, you're giving yourself an, an ample opportunity to do a lot more detail, a lot more depth. Depth is the word I was looking for. So when you're doing skinny areas, just don't dry it off as much because you don't have as much opportunity to rub. Treat the um, belt buckle as if the drumstick's not crossing it at all, and then we put the drumstick on top of the belt buckle. I'm going to go through one more time, go a little bit stronger. We'll go up here on the hat. I'll just flatten that brush out, and I can do a big area like this. I mean, seriously, how technical is that, right? It's just rub, rub, rub. Okay, on this one, I'm going to go ahead and switch to um, a liner brush to do that. Come down here, and I do our drum. Next, we're going to get, I lost a brush, ah. marigold, I'm going to put marigold to work, brightening all of our brasses. And that just starts making everybody be happier. The brass should be pretty stinking bright. So they're all going to be treated the same. I'm not going to go through. I'm going to show you the ropes here on the braids. I don't think I need to show every step of everything here. Now to brighten it, I'm going to go Marigold plus a little bit of white for the final highlights and accents. I'm going to say we've got our highlight over here, so we'll pretend like our light source is over here. And you might even take that final bright and give it a little and then maybe one of those little shadow things over here so it makes it look raised. Okay, and so we'll do that to all of these raised areas. When we get into the skinnier bands, which I was telling you about here, this is harder to use the rubbing, so I'm just going to go ahead. And in a way that probably should be braided, so let's show you a braided here. Braided is gonna go like this. Hash, 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 hash. All the way around. Then you're going to highlight the ones that are towards the middle. And you're not going to hit them all exactly straight on. Let's get you closer. Okay, so I'll be here. Whoops. And a little bit bold. That probably won't matter. And so as I lose color in my brush, I might bring it out and over. And then we'll go into white plus. And break that down just a little bit. And that gives us a little braided thing. So that little guy right there that I biffed, I'll take a little bit of my black or my gray on my palette, and I'll just wash that in and smudge it. And by the time I get done spattering or doing whatever else I'm going to do here, I don't think we'll ever notice. And then maybe a final with plus a little more white to make that stand out right in the middle. And maybe we need to fade in. There we go. Okay. And let's do one of these as well while we've got it. 
So you can use your ghostwriter okay, to give yourself some ropes. Decide how many you want. The brown is going to be the back most braids. Okay, so the dar very darkest brown is one layer of braid. Now we'll go into the honey brown and get myself a good angle here. Not watery, we don't want watery. I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to make a series of hash marks. Get enough room so that they can all stack up and leave a space in between. I think I have a little water on my brush. It's trying to be a little bit out of control here. And maybe I'll move over so that this one can be its own braid. Okay, so there's our first row of braids. Then we'll go into the marigold. The center is going to be our bright. And so we don't want them lining up. Yeah, I definitely had water in my brush that's still washy. We'll let that dry and we'll go back to it. Less and less coming out here on the sides. We definitely want them to be raised to the middle. Okay, just a tickle of the marigold out there. Then it's marigold plus white. start with the hair. We're going to shade the beard and the hair with graphite. And so we'll just give it nice curling, kind of cut it in, C-stroke kind of style. Same thing on his beard. And we'll flip him over and do the other side too. Don't forget his mustache. Now, remember what I said about not flipping your brush over. I even catch myself doing it. It's like, seriously, you know better. Flip him over. Didn't do his other mustache side. So I'll flip me around. And that side of my hair is still pretty wet, so I'm going to come over here and do this side. My gray has got crusty paint on the edge of it. I really need a fresh little puddle there. I can't forget his eyebrows. Looking for balance, always, always looking for balance. Okay. Now we can take that same press it brush and find our little guys. And we need kind of a medium guy. And we're going to go into autumn red. And we're going to dry rub. And I'm picking a big one and I'm doing it very lightly now that I've got my mustache on there. I know where his cheeks are going to be. I want him very smooth. But nutcrackers definitely have that I have a blush cheek look to them. Okay, 
something like that. He looks a little bit like a zombie right now with his little white eyes. Okay, so now we'll do his hair some more, which is going to be using the Raphael. The neat thing about the Raphael is I can use it big or small. And let's see, our hair is... There's our dove gray. Okay, so I'm going to make a fine puddle, a nice thinned puddle of dove gray with water. And then some of our curls are going to go out, and some are going to come in. And they could go across his face a little bit if you want them to. Okay, we're gonna have a couple little eyebrow kind of things going on. And we'll bring white into our puddle. And I forgot his beard. Shoot. Okay, so we'll go into dove gray and make a dove gray puddle again. If I jump too fast, it'll be too bright. And not thick enough paint. If it looks swampy when you're doing it, then you know that you don't have enough paint in your mix. And then this beard goes the same way. Some go this way, some go this way. Okay, he's got curly hair. Now I'll go back into that white mix, and I think maybe more white. You want to be able to tell the white from the dove gray. So it needs to stand out. Okay, just a couple highlights in the middle here on his mustache. I'm going to leave his eyebrows alone. Oops. And starting to get a little too, too thick so my brush isn't standing up to that. It's got to have thin paint to feed. Alright, his hair is done. Okay, I've got his eyes base coated with Salem Blue and I think they're dry. And now I'm going to do a very fine float. Mm, too much water. Okay, apparently we're not going to do a very fine float. Come on, little float. I'll go over here to the side and see if it'll stick. There we go. Are you dry? There we go. And now we've got that with ultra something something ultramarine blue. One of those examples of when you just need a little hair of a color. His eyeball is graphite for his pupil. And somehow, I don't think it belongs there. All right, we'll give him a graphite going over this way, like he's looking over there. And I'll give him a little bit of a white highlight over here. A little one in his eyeball. A little white flex in his mustache, beard. We need to make his nose distinct, so we're going to just go ahead and line on either side of it with the shading flesh color. Stay out of his mustache. And then we'll swipe on just a little bit of a highlight, which we'll use white and a little touch of shading flesh. And maybe mostly white. And that gives him a little lift to his nose. I think I'm going to leave the teeth mm, unlined. I don't like them lined. I don't like them unlined. Grr. Maybe we'll have just a little bit of gray. That says, hey, I have two rows of teeth. 
that is close. Okay. Okay, our latest, one of our latest additions to our stencil line is um, this Harlequin Diamonds stencil. And you'll see that it looks like in some areas that it might not be cut out completely. And what that does is it's to create a kind of a grunge background effect which is going to look perfect with this because I've got it so grungy anyway. Um, I think it's just absolutely going to fit the bill 100%. Okay, I'm going to use Tack It Over and Over, and I'm going to use a, a big thing called an ink sweeper, which is just a really wide, um, wide dauber. And what I'm going to do is pat it on my palette, and I don't want... What I, I love using a roller, but I don't want to get my roller dirty right now and have to rinse and rinse and rinse and rinse and rinse. So I'm just going to put some of this on. I know I want a little bit of the grungy side. This is a little bit less hoggish when it's using up the, um, the material too. So it's just a little bit more. I'm going to let this dry till it is clear. And I'm going to go wash this dauber or this ink sweeper thing out right away so that I don't get any errors or any um, sticky stuff. I'll lay this where it can't get in trouble. And then immediately when I get done with this on my mat, because this tack it over and over again sticks so stinking well, you won't believe it. I'll use a goof off wipe. It takes it right off. It also removes paint. A little good old dried on paint. This is about my tenth project with this mat, and I've got some gold specks I could take some time cleaning off. But considering what I have done, I haven't had to change my paper, I haven't had to do a whole bunch of excess things. Works fantastic. Masks when I'm spattering. Okay. Nice and clean. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my compass. It has a lid on it so that you don't get stabbed by the point. It has extra lead stored on the, on the end and I'm going to run this along to make myself a lovely little borderline. It's a great way to evenly measure a really a really irregular surface like this. Okay, I'm going to use a product called Stretchy Tape. And what Stretchy Tape does is it actually stretches as you are pulling, whoops, not on a nonstick mat. I'll show you on the piece. It comes in different sizes. You need to work with shorter bits. Okay, I'm going to go here. And as I'm pulling it around the corner, I pull on one side and it stretches to bend around that corner. Okay, and that is how I'm going to get a perfectly wonderful little simple edge. And I think we'll just tear here. Comes in, the, th the more you need it to bend, the more you need it to bend, the thinner you need to use it. Okay, and I'll just tape this whole thing up like that. And I'm going to take my fingernip fingernip fingertip dauber and put it in avocado. I'm just going to run that along, tapping straight up and down. All the way around. Okay, I'm going to use a deer foot stippler and I'm going to put a lot of water in it and I'm going to tap on my palette. This is how you get a sponge effect when you can't get a sponge in there. This is loose and open and you just skip spots and it'll look like I sponged it. Just rock your hand around. Lots of water makes it open and do more magical wonderfulnesses. But we don't want to base coat it this color because that won't look right. And it'll look like we base coated it that color. 
try not to make an obvious pattern, which is what I was just doing. And I think let's go ahead and get some of our light green in there. Just a little bit of the light foliage green. And let's walk that. I don't want it too bright, but I think I could tone that down. All the way across. Okay, and then we'll peel our tape. And you've never done a border so easy before. Okay, we're going to let that dry, and we're going to do a little bit of doctoring on our, um, our clock face. I covered up more of my more of my trim than I wanted to, or than I thought I wanted to. I thought I wanted to, but now I've discovered that I was wrong. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to add it back in where I think it needs to pop out a little bit more. Oops, and keep my arm out of. Okay. I'll do the top one of this dries. Okay, my theory is that I want to take my jumbo dauber and really smash it out so I don't have very much paint on it. And I want to create this diamond pattern down here. Let's peek at it and see. Okay, and we're going to have to grow up into a lighter color. That's going to be desert sand plus espresso. So as we raise up out of this, I want you not to know whether or not you think you saw what you think you saw. Whew. No bug. Okay, that's too dark, so we'll go into this and fade it down. Much lighter. I want those on the edge. Stronger to the edge, not so much above. Yeah. See how that just kind of fades. And same thing on this side. Also, if it's not as dry as the other side, it's going to make a different pattern. Those guys in there. Line them up. Okay. I think the layering is what gives that depth and dimensions to um, your projects. Now these, I just plunk them in my water basin and make sure that they get submerged and then I go wash them out afterwards. <clears throat> Next, we get into our pale gold powders. I'm going to pull some of this out. We want it shiny, we're going to go into shiny 
glossy varnish and we're going to mix it in and it instantly becomes liquid shine and it will stay that way on your piece super duper 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 shiny gold it looks just like gold mixed up you can suspend this in any any liquid that that will heat like if you put it in water you'll be able to dust it off later I'm also going to thin it with water in my brush my liner I've got my Raphael liner as long as I wash it out right away this won't hurt it we'll get in a little tighter and then what I want to do and I've got to switch my piece around is I need to line on the side that I can see to right my hand is going to be straight up and down and I'm going to run my knuckle right along this piece and I need a little bit more on my brush. And that will give me just enough of a little bit of a shine. Okay, I'm going to start shading around the edge with espresso. And it's really nice because there's a little teeny raised lip there. And that's going to make the clock, I can get you on there, the clock pop out just a little bit more. I will also come over to the corners of things and in front of the gold, I'll increase the shading in those specific areas just with a float. And over here in this corner as well. Just cut it in, bring it down. Don't cover the gold. Okay, and that'll just reinforce all of our little borders and edges. Okay, I think we need a little bit more color up here, so I'm using Heritage Brick that's thinned down. And I'm going to create some little berries. A little bit of something going on. Different um, strengths and you know, some faded, some strong. Okay. okay I have my guy masked, my um, scarecrow. No, he's not a scarecrow. Uh, my nutcracker. And I've got bleached sand. I want it watery so I get really big blobs. The more water you get with spattering, the more blobs you get. Okay, now I'm getting it on the nutcracker. So I need to move my mask. Actually, I'm going to leave my mask in the same place, and I'm going to repeat with white, but less of it. mask down here and increase my mask and okay that gives us a little bit more flaky kind of thing going on I don't know what that is but I'm trying to make happen let's get that out of there so that's where we take our eraser, in this case I'm going to spit on it, and that will remove that, those paint drops right there. Spatters stay wet for a while, so you want to be really careful not to encourage any spatter smears. to remove. You can also take your Q-tips if you're still wet and those clean them off nicely too. All right, next is where I take, I'm going to spatter with my gold and I'm 
gonna spatter in the middle of my flower, kind of heavily. I'm gonna spatter on my leaves. I don't care if I get some spatters on my guy, but I wanna be careful not to get overboard. So maybe I will go ahead and just mask him. Because I want to choose where I want my spatters. So I'll mask over this direction. I'm going to gold spill, apparently. I'm gonna gold up the sides. When you see this done in person, it is amazing. Do buy some gold patterns and do play, because it's awesome. Okay. I'll go a little over his head. Now I'm going to switch to a smaller one of these brushes. Because I want to get some control. Okay, so load my brush with watery stuff, tap on my palette. Now this is where you can get mondo, 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 mondo control. I'm going to tap this right over my braid and it will put the spatters right where I want them and not all over the other place. Okay, right on my button. You gotta anchor it, lower it down, adjust your, your angle and it'll fall right on there. Right across his little band here. I think I need to make it. The brush is long, so it'll spatter in the direction of the shape of the brush. So adjust your angle. Practice on a piece of paper. It really does work. Okay. What else needs? I think a couple of our buttons need. step is to be cutting out. I put a little gold line up the side. I don't know if you can see it. It's there. Last step is to go ahead and cut my leaves out. I'm going to use this nonstick mat and a detailed knife. I'm going to follow right along my green line. Okay. Nicely done. Okay, it's not a non-stick mat, it's a self-healing mat. And actually what I really, really want is not my healing mat. I want my glass palette. It has all my deformed tacket over and over on it because it will hold down my rock lawn while I'm cutting it. And that will help me tremendously. So I'll get this stuck on there, rub it down. You can hold it down while you're doing it, it cuts much more smoothly. 